How you doing, uh, Soros and United Nations? I'm not sure why the Great Spirit is telling me that this video is for y'all. Uh, got my USOC shirt on today for all of you who are curious as to what shirt I just happen to be wearing today. <clears throat> you know how this works now. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the Great Spirit just threw this uh, water into my mind, which is another true story about my history there, seeing how somebody wanted to suck the essence out of me there, Hillary Clinton, like you do uh, children these days. Well, <clears throat> like I said, the essence that was here uh, made sure that y'all's little scorpion that was you, you were riding across to get across the river stung you, which is a fable in the Bible there. <clears throat> so, uh... It decided, yeah, you know, this guy's uh, water is way, uh, gives me a lot more power than anybody else's water that I've ever got into their mind. Well, then was when it decided, Hillary, you know, I think I'm going to just go along with this guy because uh, he taught me all the different facets of a con job, all the way down to the quantum lettering within words themselves, <laughs> which... Uh, Many of you had not caught on to for years, including your names were uh, part of the con job, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so, um, Hill Rod, <laughs> uh, George Soros for SOAR operating system. And I'm not saying George Soros is a SOAR operating system. I'm saying that the combination of a Jewish person uh, that's intermingled with Nazi technology is what God would consider a SOAR operating system. And that's where you come into the Borg Warner Toolbox. Now, I've been talking to George there in my emails, and I think he's figured out by now that uh, they tried to set him up there by whacking Christopher uh, Sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember I sent that email there, George? Uh, please whack the people, because we're related. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. That's what's neat about Ancestry.com there, George. See, we're, we're triangle-shaped cars. And uh, I'm also related to the Rockefellers. <laughs> Y'all have a lot of family resemblance there, you and the Rockefellers do, George. <laughs> Plus, you know, I figured by the time this con job's pretty much wrapped up here and everybody's starting to figure out that the entire scheme was to prop up Texas to be the biggest uh, oil distributor in the world, much like what is taking place. Well, well, if you happen to be related to the Rockefellers there, George, well, I would imagine that you probably played a role in that, Lucifer, uh, who would be the great deceiver, and you deceived all your little uh, slaves that you own, <coughs> which is, you know, that was pretty slick. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got to hand it to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we obviously are getting to that uh, point in time where uh, the gauntlet's going to come down and everybody's going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, Texas is the new master of the world. Oh, look at that, <laughs> 316 in this video right when I said that. So, uh, <clears throat> the story, uh, United Nations, is uh, about a time, I don't, you, know, you remember that uh, Oksana, the Russian that I was married to, that was their reason for hacking my mind because I was some sort of Russian agent, right? Just because I was married to a Russian, I hadn't even talked to her in eight years when uh, y'all decided to use me after you d determined that, oh, we could use this guy and we could set him up. And when it was all said and done, it would uh, his ties to President Trump or just the simple fact that he uh, was a Trump supporter, which I wasn't ever really a Trump supporter, but I liked what he said. Okay, I liked what Trump said. I just didn't, uh, you know, I, I, if you haven't noticed, I'm pretty good at deep dives and I can look at things and go, <laughs> come on, <laughs> you know, so, <clears throat> uh, plus his name was in play. I don't know if, you know, if you've been paying attention or not. I was privy to all of that name game that would take in place over the years. So, so I was just like, yeah, yeah, I see what's going on here. <laughs> Trump was the tallest tower in uh, New York after the Twin Towers came down. So what's that? Was he Trump in our soul? Right, right. So so you got this big, great deceiver operation going on. But, well, when you can walk on water, you don't really get deceived now, do you? So uh, let me get to the story. Uh, Oksana, she was very violent, and she would get real hostile sometimes. And I've already made a, a story about a time that she would 
beat the shit out of me, right? Of course, I'm a man. I wouldn't hit her back. I would, like, like get her in a headlock and try to make her stop. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, that was about as much as I ever touched her. I mean, when, when you got a woman uh, trying to stab you with a butcher knife or pulling a gun on you and shooting at you, <clears throat> well, you know, putting her in a headlock's not that big of a deal now, is it? <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> there's that. Uh, but the time that she was flipping out on me and the cops showed up and we, we hadn't even really gotten a physical altercation too much, but she was just yelling and screaming and bloody murder. And I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Right. She was, it, it sounded like something bad was going on. Well, when the cops showed up, uh, cause the night we lived in apartments and the neighbors called the cops, uh, they took us both to jail. Uh, so we're sitting there on the bench, right, <laughs> and inside the uh, hooskow there, getting ready to be booked. And uh, uh, this is something that a normal human can't do. Okay, uh, you're you're you got to have a little ghost rider with you to pull this off. All right, because your uh, natural instincts and your mechanism uh, isn't going to allow your body to do what I did. <laughs> But I held my breath uh, to the point to where uh, practically I passed out and and my face was so ghost white, right, uh, while I was laying on the floor of the hooskow that the police actually went, oh, yeah, <laughs> there's something wrong with this guy. We got to get him to the hospital, right? So they uh, show up and they load me into the uh, ambulance and about a quarter of the way probably to the hospital, I, I, I come back around and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that worked. <laughs> you know, I'm driving down the road and the and sirens are going off and I'm in the back of an ambulance and <laughs> that worked to perfection. <laughs> so they haven't even booked me yet, right? <laughs> so I get to the hospital. They put me, I, I, I'm just kind of like playing it off, like, <laughs> I'm out of it, right? Uh, so they put me in my hospital bed, and they took my belongings off of me and everything. I think I had a watch on, and they, my wallet out of, and all of that stuff, and they put it in a bag laying right there on the uh, counter in the room that I was in, and I was in the hospital bed. So I'm sitting there, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm kind of like, Nobody was around. <laughs> so I got up, right? I grabbed my, my bag full of stuff, put my wallet in my pocket, threw my watch on, and just boom, right out the door, hauled ass, and walked home. I just walked home. It was about a three-mile march, right? So I, I didn't get on the road in case they were going to look for me and all that stuff. Uh, I got off the road about you know a quarter of a mile, was jumping over fences and stuff, and just kind of tugging along there. I get home and, you know, uh, call my dad and say, hey, uh, I'm going to need you to get Oksana out of uh, jail uh, tomorrow for me. I can't do it because uh, I'm supposed to be in there with her. Well, you know, I explained to him what happened. He was like, how do you always do that? <laughs> I mean, I've outran the cops like that so many times. Like the time I hit on the roof of 24-hour fitness and watched them look for me for about an hour and then walked home from 24-hour fitness and my mom picked me up at Ron Carter. Yeah, yeah, that one was pretty neat, too. They had helicopters, dogs, the whole nine yards. Man, I've already made a video about that, too. <coughs> Still outran them. Well, this particular time, uh, I get a, I got a summons in the mail like two months later. Hey, you got a court date for uh, assault and battery or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Or, or I'm sorry, it was just a domestic violence. It wasn't because there wasn't, she didn't have anything wrong with her. Like I said, we didn't even get into a physical altercation that time. It was just the bloody murder that had the cops show up. And when they came in the house, she was just flipping out, right? And, I mean, they do what cops do. And they take you to jail, <laughs> right? Both of them, both of us. So, <laughs> so I go to the uh, first hearing. Uh, no, I'm, I, yeah, I went to the first hearing. And I talked to the DA, and uh, he said, uh, "You, you, you know, this is a, this is going to go on your record, and it's the fines. I think it was like two thousand dollars or something like that. I can't remember." I said, "Dude, I want to. I didn't actually get to court until like three years later. I mean, it's a backlog from hell over there in Seabrook where I lived. All right, so, 
So they have this big backlog. So, and not to mention, uh, we split up right after that, right? So Oksana and I split up right after that. And the first time that I went, uh, she wasn't anywhere around to even show up to her uh, arraignment or whatever. So I can't remember exactly what it was that drug it out so long, <laughs> but uh, it was something. But so I told the uh, district attorney, I said, dude, <laughs> I ain't fucking with you. You don't have anything. You didn't even book me that night. <laughs> Do you even have a photo of me being arrested? Do you have my fingerprints? How do you know it was me that was there? We know it was you. All right, come on. We know it was you. And I was like, well, I tell you what. I want a trial by jury. Oh, well. Well, you'll go to prison for five years if you're found guilty. That's what they tell me every time they do that. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've told a district attorney over some stupid shit, a, a failure to change address one time, I just tell them I want a trial by jury, right? Every single time at the end of it, they'll go, this one was a little bit more serious. They wanted me. They really wanted me for some reason. I, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they'll just tell you there's not enough jurors that day to try your case. Every time. That's what they always say. They, and they'll always tell you that, well, if you're found guilty, you're, it's, you're, you'll go to jail and all of this stuff. I don't care. Let's do it. What you got? <laughs> so uh, I'm sitting there. Uh, the first time, and and I and I had to go back a second time, and he said the same thing all over and over again. He said, uh, you know, we'll 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 cut the fine in half, and and blah 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 blah. I was like, nah, man, look, it's either trial by jury, or or you know nothing. And uh, he said, uh, well, do you even have a lawyer? And I was like, no, I don't need a lawyer, dude. I'll just represent myself. <laughs> Of course, I knew where this was going already. I knew Oksana wasn't going to show up to court the day that I was going to have the trial, right? So the third time I go in there and I walk in there and they got their jury ready. They already got everybody. And I'm looking around like, <laughs> this is going to be fucking hilarious. <laughs> so I walked up to the, uh, <laughs> to the front of the judge and he said, uh, Chase, I was just, or Mr. Smith, I was just informed that, uh, the key witness isn't going to be here today, so your case is dismissed. And when I turned around and looked at the jurors, they were all like, well, who is this guy? Is he some sort of mobster or something? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I was walking out of the courtroom, and the cop that took me to the hospital the night that I uh, held my breath so long that I passed out, and I was just pasty white, and they were like, yeah, there's actually something wrong with this guy. That takes talent, by the way. Well, it takes a little supernatural to pull that one off. He looks at me and goes, did she go back to Russia? And I went, I don't know, bud. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you can add that to the uh, stockpile of outrunning the cops over the years uh, for stupid shit. Like the time that I, I had been drinking and I didn't want to get a DWI because I was in helicopter school. Uh, that was the night that I, uh, I hid out on the roof of 24-hour fitness. <laughs> Literally, there was a cold water pipe and a hot water pipe, and I scaled up the top and got on the roof after they chased me. The initial, initially, I got away, and then I came back to where it all started and just got up there and watched them look for me and then tracked home about three hours after that, and my mom picked me up at Ron Carter uh, there in Alvin. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, that... That's just another one of those stories that's in play, right, in some interdimensional way. And for some reason, they're United Nations and uh, George Soros, the great spirit, thought that I should let you know that that story's for you. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. Maybe you all do. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, just a little bit more water for you there, Hillary, uh, since you wanted to suck the essence out of me. <laughs>